So today we'll be talking about copying code from W3Schools that you may have originally found or even modified, discussing why we'd want to do this, where we can put the code, and then how you run and test it if it's not at W3Schools. So here we have W3Schools, and it's at the Java Tutorial page. So I'm just going to fast forward to a spot where I have found some code. And the nice part about W3Schools, again, is that it really gives you every bit of code that's needed to run in your own browser as well. So you can, of course, make the changes here. Click on the Submit button, and the results will show up here. But perhaps more usefully is if you decided that you wanted to have this code saved so that you could run it on your own machines, even without internet connection, you can just simply highlight all this code copy it, and then choose uh, some kind of a text editor to use. In our case, we're going to be looking at using Notepad++. It has some pretty nice advantages compared to, say, just Notepad, which is provided by Windows. Notepad++, when I put code in here, it looks just like it did before, but kind of the magic comes along when you tell the program to save your file as a certain file type. So I'm going down to save as. And so what I want to point out here is that it's important not only the file name that I give it, but the file type. So I'm going to say testing W3 schools. And for this to really run in a browser, it needs to be an HTML file. So I can type in h to quickly get down to the h section and find the html so sure enough now i've got the name where it's going to be going i've already chosen above uh, and now the file type okay notice that w3 schools then will add this on you do need to pay attention if you just went in here and typed in that html yourself it may be that if this was still on something other than that like txt that you'd end up with uh, a different file type than you expected. So remember the .html is showing us the file extension, which then indicates what the automatic program uh, will be to launch it. So in this case, a browser. Okay. So now you can see as soon as I've um, as soon as I've saved this, now a few things have happened. Uh, one of the biggest things to notice is that uh, Notepad++ will highlight or color code some of the keywords. Uh, another thing is you'll notice there are boxes around certain areas. Uh, this is kind of handy so that if I if I wanted to double check um, did I have my starting and closing of the body save okay, then there it is. And likewise with HTML, if you click on a tag or an opening um, parenthesis or curly brace, uh, Notepad++ will automatically highlight the other one so that you know if you've got it matched up. Uh, so if you ever click on one and you don't see another one to highlight, that means you've missed one. Okay, And right here we can see here is buried within the body, in this case, uh, the actual script for the page, which is the JavaScript. Okay, And by using these little buttons, I could uh, open and close the whole section. So if I had a lot of code and I wanted to uh, not be overwhelmed by how much I was seeing, I can quickly close up a whole block at once. Okay, So now I've saved this. Here's the name of the file. And the last thing to talk about now is how can I run this and take a look at it inside of a browser. So on my computer, I have lots of different browsers installed. And then by going up to the run command, I can choose any of those. So Firefox, IE, Chrome, Safari. And notice that they all have shortcuts as well, which, of course, you can modify. Uh, so if you, if you wanted to have it be something else, you could. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and launch this in Firefox. And there it is. So this is the exact same code now running locally in a file that I've saved as opposed to one that's running via W3Schools and the two boxes they've given us. So here's my file locally, and oops, and here's the one from W3Schools where if I made changes, it would run here. At the beginning, we mentioned there were several reasons why we might want to do this. So in the why part, 
Once we have code in W3 schools, we can test it and see that it's working, make changes, and modify it. But if you want to reuse that code somewhere uh, and save it, perhaps to share it, to modify it with other people, um, then you need to have your own version. Uh, and this indicates that by saving it, you can also then have a, a working version, even if you don't have an internet connection at the time. So if you are working on your own computer or your uh, tablet, you can test out an HTML file in a browser even without having a connection. So that's really nice. You can write code, test it, uh, as long as you have a browser. The where, as far as why we would uh, take it from W3 schools and where would you put it, text editors are the most common choices. There are a lot of choices out there. Uh, the one that we'll be using in class the most is called Notepad++, and there's a an open source version, so it's free to use uh, to download to your own computers. Last but not least, uh, we thought we would address how to run or test the code. So once you've saved the file with the right extension, uh, so in this case, since it's uh, an HTML file with JavaScript inside, we save it as an HTML file. And then in Notepad++, there's a run command, so we can choose which browser we'd like to use. There you have it. There's how to take code from W3Schools, save it, and reuse it in Notepad++.